Alrighty, here's the deal. Today we are making homemade bagels and lox. A classic combination. I think we all know what bagels are. I don't know that we all know what lox are. So if anybody's not familiar, not from New York or New Jersey or South Florida, doesn't run in like a inner Jewish circle, lox is cured salmon, which really just means salmon that sits on a salt and sugar mixture for a couple of days to remove some parasites or whatever could potentially harm you, all right? You slice it really thin, you put it on a bagel with some red onion and capers, some cream cheese, and call it a day. Awesome sandwich. So that's what we're doing here today. Um, first things first, what we have to do is go get some quality ingredients to make this happen. So let's do that first. Captain Clay and Sun Seafood is a mom and pop fish market located in Delray Beach, Florida, about 30 minutes away from me. I've been wanting to go and it did not disappoint. It's in a very unassuming plaza. It's been there since 2006. The fish case blew me away. Like literally I left there shook. I've never experienced anything like that. You can tell that family members are working on site. They spoke to me. They had such a nice attitude, beautiful fish, and they explained to me that a lot of the seafood in the case was literally swimming less than 48 hours ago. They were filleting fish right on site, and in addition to the salmon, I made sure to bring home some of their famous smoked fish dip as well, and I will be back. I'm not just saying this, I was blown away. Okay, so if it's not super apparent, I am still blown away with Captain Clay's Seafood Market. Absolutely phenomenal, and I can't wait to go back. But I got a beautiful one pound piece of Alaskan wild salmon. I had them take the skin off. If you don't take the skin off, the cure mixture will not penetrate that side of the fish and it will remain raw. So that's important that you do that. And I asked them for a thick piece because I knew we were gonna be slicing these very thin and it's really hard to slice an already thin filet time and time and time again. Now, really simply, what we're gonna do is create our cure, okay? It's going to be a half a cup of kosher salt or whatever salt you have. We have a half a cup of sugar. I chopped up some fresh dill. Uh, honestly, I probably used too much, but it turned out fine. And then also you want to zest a lemon to impart some flavor. I didn't have a zester or a micro blade, so I did what home cooks do and improvise. I peeled it and then did a fine chop on it, and that worked out really well. So what you're gonna do is take a pan, that's a deep pan, and this is important because the salt and cure mixture is going to extract liquid from the fish. So you're gonna have fish juice running out of it, okay? So you wanna make sure it's in something that can catch all those lovely juices. So what you're gonna do is line a deep dish with your plastic wrap. Then you're gonna put about half of the mixture down and form a bed. Put your fish directly on it and then we're gonna cover it with the remaining curing mixture. Now you wanna make sure that you put excess around the corners and edges. Once you fold up your plastic wrap, that's how those sides and corners are gonna be hit with that curing mixture. So once you do that, you're gonna wrap everything up in the plastic wrap, and it's really important to cover it with something that is heavy to put weight down on it, okay? So what I did was use another cast iron pan and then put cans of uh, like vegetables, whatever I can find in my fridge. You can fill up a Tupperware with water, whatever it is, you just wanna make sure that it's a weighted object on top of it. And then we're gonna tuck that away in the fridge for at least two days when we'll check on it. Could take up to three days. All right, this guy wanted to get in on the action. This is Finnegan. So anyway, let's see if we can do this. So it's time to get started in working on our bagel dough. So the first thing what we're gonna do is activate our yeast. Just a simple packet of active dry yeast will work well. And then I mix that with a tablespoon of sugar or whatever sweetener you have. I put it in about a quarter or a half a cup of lukewarm water. Make sure it's not too hot or you can kill the yeast and it won't work. Uh, and then I just stir it and let it hang out for about 10 to 15 minutes. It'll get cloudy and puffy, uh, and that's how it lets you know that it's ready. Okay, so while that's sitting, I've grabbed eight cups of bread flour, and I like to use bread flour because it's higher in protein, which is gonna help make for a more gluteny, AKA chewy bagel, which is one of the characteristics of bagels that we all love so much. 
Um, to that, two tablespoons of salt, whatever kind you have is fine. I did about three cups of water. And then also, I used um, malted barley syrup, okay? You can use honey, you can use sugar. This is a very traditional ingredient in like New York style bagels. I had some on hand, so I used it, uh, just like two tablespoons will do the job. And so once the yeast is ready, what you're gonna do is put that into the mixture as well. And then what I started to do was just use a fork to kind of incorporate everything very uh, loosely, just to get it started. And then what you're gonna wanna do is use your hands and knead it in the bowl until it all comes together. And it is a very, like, shaggy is the word I've seen on the internet, dough, which is kind of accurate. And then so what you're gonna do is transfer it to your surface that you're gonna be rolling it out on and kneading it. So now it's time to start kneading our dough once it's on the counter. There's no really right or wrong way to do this. I'm certainly not a professional. The biggest thing is it's time to get your workout on for the day. You're gonna wanna knead this if you're doing it by hand for like 15 good minutes. And I kinda just like roll it out, fold it into itself and continue to activate it. You could punch it, you could roll it, whatever you do, you just wanna continuously work the dough for about 15 minutes and it's gonna become like a smooth ball. By the way, I've seen some recipes say use a mixer, some definitely don't because the dough will kind of like strain the uh, machine because how like dense it is and how much water there is. I'm not sure exactly, I don't have a mixer that does bread so it made my life really easy and uh, that's all I've known. So once everything comes together, I just put a little bit of flour on my board and I let that big ball of dough uh, begin to just like activate the fermentation process and chill for about 20 minutes. All right, so our dough is ready to roll into bagels, okay? So hand rolling, uh, it takes practice, but don't let it bother you. Mine are in all shapes and sizes. It's no big deal. They're all gonna taste the same. And if you are particular about that and you roll one incorrectly, just put it back into the dough pile and adjust as need be, okay? But basically you're gonna roll out about a seven or eight inch log, give or take, and depending on what size bagel you want, you're gonna wrap it around your hand, and then where the two ends meet, we'll call that the seam, that's where you wanna make sure that it's closed and nice and sealed. You can do that by first kind of grasping it with your, creating a, a fist in your hand, and then rolling it out on the counter. The reason this is important is that if you don't have a good seal when you boil them, they're going to open up and um, not look like a bagel anymore. Again, not the end of the world, it happens to everyone, but that's how you keep them nice and closed, okay? Make sure that that seam, and then you just roll it all out to try to be as circular shaped as you can. Keep in mind, these are going to expand both overnight a little bit and once you boil them. So I would say give them room for growth based on your desired finish size. I would say you can guarantee another 25 to 33% growth once they're overnight fermented and uh, once they're boiled as well, okay? So after you roll out your bagels, you're gonna let them hang out for another 30 minutes. I put them on parchment paper on the baking sheets. I like to stack four equal glasses on the corner so that you can put two sheets on top of each other. And then this goes into the fridge uncovered overnight now the reason we're doing it uncovered is because the fridge is going to help pull out some moisture towards the exterior of the bagel dough and what that's going to lead to is a crispier crustier bagel which is one of the main characteristics of a great bagel also the fridge being that it's cooler is going to slow down fermentation so it's not going to be drastic you're not going to see huge poof on these or anything like that it's just not the nature of the bagel from my experience at least so Anyway, we'll come back to these tomorrow. All right, so fast forward, it's the next day. We take the bagels out of the fridge, and as you can see, they grew a little bit, but nothing drastically noticeable, which is completely normal, okay? And so now it's time to assemble our bagel making station. It all happens very quickly, so you want to be ready to go before you start boiling the water. So here you'll see we have the bagels set up right next to our boiling water, which is right next to our rack, and our toppings bowl, which is going to be just everything bagel seasoning that I got from Trader Joe's. And so from here, we're gonna start boiling the water. I do add a teaspoon or a little bit of uh, baking soda, and then I also put in some more of our 
barley malt syrup. Once again, you can use honey or sugar. This is gonna help with a little bit of sweetness, but also that sugar is gonna help with the caramelization on the outside of the bagel, okay? So what we're gonna do is take our bagels and we're going to drop them in. I do like three at a time typically, whatever fits without being too crowded. And then they are going to boil on each side for a minute. The boil, the rapidness of it might decrease, don't worry about that. And so you flip them, minute on each side, you take them out, and then right away I hit them with the toppings on both sides. I like to get really good coverage. And I put them down on the baking sheet and I rinse and repeat. What I didn't mention earlier is you're gonna to wanna to preheat your oven. I go as hot as possible. Mine goes up to 500 degrees. And then what I do is just put them in and I let them go for about 10 minutes and I peek on them. And I like to flip mine over. Every oven is different. There's different hot zones. You gotta kinda of just know your oven. I like to flip them over and make sure that we're getting nice and crusty on both sides. So after another 10 minutes or so, I take them out and I let them just hang out. As fresh as they are and great as they are, yes, I ripped into one and ate some of it and it was delicious, but you're gonna wanna let these cool off. They're really warm right now and I actually think they're better because you don't wanna get like cream cheese on a hot surface. That becomes a little gross in itself. So anyway, let these guys just hang out and naturally cool. And when that's happening, it's a great time to start preparing our sandwich toppings, our lox, our capers, red onions, etc. Now it's time to take the locks out of the fridge while the bagels are cooling off. And at this point, we unwrap everything and we are going to rinse off all of the cure mixture, the dill, the lemon. You just basically want it to be down to the salmon, okay? You'll notice the color has changed and also it's much like drier of a texture, very firm on the outside, which is what you want because the salt pulled out all of that moisture as well. And so, Next up, what we're gonna do is cut it into some thin slices. I'll be honest, when you buy store-bought or at a deli, they have really paper thin slices. I don't have a professional grade knife. I'm not a professional grade slicer. Um, just do the best you can. But if you're not familiar with lox, you don't wanna take like a huge bite the way you would normal salmon. It'll just be overkill of salt and rawness, etc., or raw-like texture. So very thin slices, you don't need too much of it. I'll be honest, I don't know if you can tell, mine didn't cure all the way throughout the entire fish. Um, so what I did was just slice off the exterior pieces and put the rest in the fridge because I committed to bagels today and we were gonna make it happen one way or another. But uh, this thick of a salmon, now I know, will take at least probably three days. So also I, I slice up some really, really thin red onion. I've got capers. I mixed in some scallion I had on hand with my cream cheese. And now it's time to assemble the sandwich. And I wanna mention, I'm not a monster. I don't put tomatoes on my sandwiches. It's something that we need to address as a society. On a warm sandwich, tomatoes are disgusting. They become mushy and watery and runny. And even on a cool sandwich, they're slimy and bounce off the other end. I don't know what it is and ketchup and tomatoes, I, I feel like it's one of those things we just have to acknowledge. We don't actually like them. Or at least I don't like them, but so anyway, long story short, rant over. That's why there's no tomatoes on this sandwich, which is very traditional. And so basically it's just time to assemble. We've got the bagel, the scallion cream cheese. We've got lox, red onion, time to dive in. Let's do it. Okay, give me a second. <laughs> first things first, if there's not seeds in my teeth, I didn't put enough everything bagel seasoning on the outside, but in all seriousness, first impressions, you have a really nice crust. So you get that nice crunch, and once you penetrate that, it's a very soft, chewy interior bagel, which is exactly what we love about bagels. You got the creaminess uh, from the cheese, 
you have the sharpness from the raw red onion, thinly sliced, a little bit of texture, but some nice bite and acidity. The capers are like little briny salt bombs, which just come in every so often. Another layer of creaminess, just a lot of good contrast from texture to salty uh, to rich. And then you have a very briny element here with the capers and the locks themselves. Mm -hmm. All right, so in summary, this is an absolute treat. It's really not that hard and it feels like such a novelty because you don't really think, at least I didn't think, that you could make this stuff at home or I never thought to make it at home is what I should say. The bagels are as easy of a dough mixture as you can make, a homemade bread if you will. The salmon is literally putting it in salt and sugar and putting it in the fridge. It is a phenomenal combination. The biggest takeaway is things I would do differently. I would leave the, make sure to give the salmon adequate time to cure properly. I'd probably shape my bagels a little bit smaller, not because I care so much, but because they're not functional when they're so big sometimes. And then you have to like have a massive hole. But, um, but yeah, I would say get after it. How bad can fresh dough be? And uh, it's just a great combination. Shout out to Captain Clay's once again. Their salmon and their, their restaurant was just, or their market, I should say, incredible. And uh, thank you guys for being here. I'm really excited to start my food journey. I don't know exactly where it's going. I'll be cooking, I'll be eating, but I, I know it's a passion of mine and I certainly hope to, uh, or look forward to continuing to share that passion. So take care guys and have a great day.